Hi, hi, colleagues. Yes. Hi, Ska colleagues. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. I'm Ye Dong Kim, Ska president. Thank you all for your participation and engagement in the Ska 2022 Open Science Conference. This is the second time Ska has had a full online uh, Open Science Conference since 2018. Of course, it would have been much better to meet and greet in person, and that is unfortunate. However, the online setting still enabled great presentations and discussion on the latest Antarctic sciences. Also, the SCA science groups have also had a very good, their first business meeting online last week. It was a great opportunity to revitalize the SCAS group and also uh, the expert and action groups. And of course, uh, we are having an official uh, closing ceremony today, but there will be a number of parallel session and important workshops remaining until uh, next Wednesday. I would like to thank all the SCAR audience for being so engaging and also thank the session conveners for their time and effort, and also all those behind the scene making this online uh, OSC possible. I also thank the uh, local organizing committee and the international science organizing committee, and also to the secretariat. The SCAR Open Science Conference, Conference 2022 hosted 11 main sessions, 48 parallel sessions, five workshops, five satellite meetings, and more than 300 posters. As of today, we had uh, 2,550 registered participants, which is a huge success considering the online format of the Open Science Conference. It has been a, a privilege and honor to hear the tremendous amount of work that is being done on the Antarctic and uh, Southern Ocean. Sky is all about science facilitation and coordination. Much of this science facilitated by SCAR is then delivered to the policymaker. They will hopefully induce changes for the better in preserving Antarctica and advancing uh, science. As I have already noted in the opening ceremony, the uh, climate crisis is a very close reality. The changes that are happening in Antarctica have significant and far-reaching global consequences. SCA will continue to focus on the changes happening in Antarctica, and at the same time, foster various scientific disciplines to all together to have a home in SCA groups. SCA highly value this work that is done by our research community, much of it on the volunteer basis. SCA Open Science Conference is the perfect venue in which we gather to hear each other's presentation and also share our experiences in our journey of research in the Antarctic and Southern Ocean. Usually this meeting will also include dinners to get to know each other, but in online setting, uh, that's not possible. But uh, we took advantage of online setting where people could gather despite uh, being in different time zones and locations. Okay, to celebrate and recognize outstanding service and excellent in research being done by our uh, colleagues, SCA has been awarding the SCA Medal for Excellence in Tactic uh, Research, Medal for International Coordination, and the Medal for Education and Communication every uh, two years. I believe it is uh, most appropriate to be awarding SCA medals during this uh, uh, closing ceremony on, of the Open Science Conference. So at this time, first, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Mutulagu uh, uh, Ravichandran, SCA Vice President for the Capacity Building Education and Training to present the SCA Medal for Education and Communication. Ravi? Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ajahn. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. I mentioned Ravi Chandran, Vice President of SCAR, looking after capacity building, education, and training activities of SCAR. 
The SCAR Medal for Education and Communication is uh, awarded for excellence or innovation in and sustained commitment to communicating Antarctic research, uh, making a significant contribution to educating the next generation of Antarctic research, or contributing to build new capacity in SCAR member countries. This medal is awarded since 2018. I sincerely thank all the reviewers for their contributions. The SCAR Medal for Education and Communication for the year 2022 goes to Dr. Bethan Davies. From, uh, now I will read this, uh, read out the citation. Dr. Bethan Davies is fascinated about the communication of polar regions, more specifically Antarctica, past, present, and future. He was based at the Royal Alway University of London, shortly moving to Newcastle University in August, <clears throat> and expressed her passion through teaching, supervising postgraduate students, and giving public talks, including at COP26. Dr. Davis wrote and developed the Antarctic Glacier website as part of her commitment to outreach, education, and communication. The website has more than 4 million views, averaging over 80,000 per month, and is a substantial resource for teachers, recognized with their certificate of excellence in geological education by the Geologist Association. He leads the website, employing earlier career colleagues to produce additional content. The website is supported by scientific and charitable organizations, including CAR, Quaternary Research Association, Antarctic Science Bursary, and Geologist Association. Dr. Davis and the website have been cited by global media, including The Guardian, New York Times, and Nature, as well as organizations such as NASA and the Royal Geographical Society. The website is used as a teaching resource by more than 20 universities and numerous schools. She has also been instrumental in getting funding for and producing educational activities, including Polar Environments Day, for 150 school students from diverse or lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Congratulations, Dr. Davis. And now I invite Dr. Davis to and share your views. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I wanted to say thank you for the award. Um, I feel humbled and thrilled and very grateful. Uh, and I wanted to thank Hugh Griffiths, who nominated me and the SCAR committee for this recognition. Um, when I started my website, Antarctic Glaciers, some 10 years ago, I didn't really know what I was doing. I had no idea what it was going to become and how much a labour of love this website would be. But I found a supportive and engaged online community who encouraged me and helped me to maintain momentum and to keep this going. So I'm grateful to everyone who has collaborated with me on various outreach and education and EDI projects over the years, uh, and especially to the organizations who supported my various projects, uh, both financially uh, and to everybody who's contributed uh, articles or content to uh, my story maps projects or to antarcticglaciers.org. Uh, and this especially includes some of the early career researchers who contributed substantially over the years. Uh, some projects will remain close to my heart. They were a huge amount of fun and I really enjoyed doing them. Uh, the Esri story maps project was great fun and really satisfying and involved a huge number of people who really gave their time enthusiastically. Uh, and the recent Polar Day, where we ran a science event for local schools with disadvantaged children, remains a highlight for me uh, and was only successful again because of the commitment of a large number of people. Uh, I remain inspired by a number of excellent science communicators and EDI champions who are using a wide range of different platforms uh, like TikTok and podcasts and and. Uh, all sorts of things, pub science festivals, uh, TV shows. There are so many different ways in which people are excelling at science communication. Um, and some of those people are, are here today. Uh, but I do feel that given the current pace of climate change, ever more clear and accurate communication of the latest science has never been more important. Uh, and I'm excited to keep doing my best to support public engagement, to keep working with journalists and with teachers, 
and campaigning for better equality, diversity and inclusion within our community. So I wanted to finish with a call to arms, uh, both equality, diversity and inclusion and the clear, frank and public communication of our science has never been more important and messaging on climate change needs to be simple, often repeated and understandable. If you're interested in getting involved, the best way to do it is just to start. Uh, there are many platforms and many different ways of doing it, so you can find something that's best suited to your talents, whether that's making TikTok films or podcasts or going into schools, engaging with children. There are lots of different ways to do it. The best way to find an audience is just to start. You'll make lots of mistakes, you'll learn loads and you'll have lots of fun. Uh, to the more senior scientists in the audience, you too have a critical role to play. Uh, both in supporting your mentees, their efforts to communicate science, but also ensuring that the organisations that you are a part of are supporting science communication uh, and logistically and financially, because it's never been more important. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to uh, Dr. Bethan Davis. It's a very nice word, for, especially for the uh, young researchers. Now, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Dr. Jefferson Sinoes, uh, SCA Vice President for Finance, to present the SCA Medal for International Scientific Coordination. Jefferson, you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's an honor to award the SCA Medal for International Cooperation, it's called, sorry, International Coordination 2022 to Professor Stephen Hackley. Professor Stephen Hackley has been the leader of modern Antarctic sea ice research since its inception in the 1970s. His scientific career has encompassed the mechanical, physical, biological, and biochemical properties of sea ice. He has 78 scientific journals, papers, and many reports, monographs, who represent major contributions to the understanding of Antarctic sea ice properties and processes. Professor Ackley has initiated, undertake, or participate in several international programs and partnerships, including the expert group on Antarctic sea ice process and climate, ASPECT, from 1998 to 2018, as chair, founding, and co chair, and on the SCAR and external bodies. Professor Rackley has been lead or co lead on international expeditions. 2017, Pipers, Polinias, Ice Production, and Seasonal Evolution in the Ross Sea Expedition, including a diverse and inclusive international group from PhD to senior science. Ice Station Weldo, 1991, IPY Simba, 2007. He has also been a great champion of new technologies such as UAVs for under ice work. Professor Hackley has mentored generations of sea ice researchers, going well beyond his own students and country. He is a leader in bringing together researchers from sub-disciplines and attract science from other disciplines to sea ice. His impact is felt almost everywhere in Antarctic sea ice research. So I now give you the, the word, the floor to Professor Stephen Hackling to say some words. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Samoz, uh, for that very kind uh, introduction. And <clears throat> I I'm uh, really overwhelmed with the uh, with the award for the for international uh, scientific uh, coordination uh, in Antarctic sea ice. Um, my history in Antarctic sea ice uh, started with uh, 
my appointment uh, as a research scientist at the Cold Regions Research and Engineering Laboratory in uh, New Hampshire uh, back in uh, 1968, where I was actually drafted into the Army uh, at that time uh, of the Vietnam conflict and set off a, a long career in uh, polar research, for which I'm uh, very grateful. Um, as uh, Dr. Samoa has mentioned, uh, work started in 1974, and it's very seldom we can start to take a look at the, uh, at the beginning of, of uh, an era, which I'm very uh, proud and happy to be uh, involved with. And this was in, a, in 1974 when I uh, uh, obtained a, a year abroad at the uh, University of Melbourne's uh, Met Department which is associated with the Antarctic Division that's now become uh, at part of the University of Tasmania and the Antarctic Research Center in, uh, in Hobart uh, with, associated with the Antarctic Division. And I think the first international conference that we had on Antarctic sea ice was in the coffee room at the, uh, mm -hmm. at the Met Department with uh, my colleague, uh, Ian Allison. Um, Ian and I have uh, participated in uh, many uh, expeditions uh, from national programs uh, uh, since that time, and uh, he refers to us as a uh, as uh, dividing the eastern and western hemisphere of uh, Antarctic uh, sea ice for for many time, many years. Um, in the 1970s, we were involved in national programs and. Uh, there wasn't uh, uh, the logistic efforts that we uh, have uh, today, but we were able to uh, start off uh, working in the uh, field in Antarctic sea ice in the Weddell Sea with uh, uh, Coast Guard icebreakers uh, at that time who were chartered to uh, go down and break out the channel in McMurdo Sound and then uh, would uh, be available for some period, a small period of time uh, after that. And, you know, the, uh, many of the expeditions were very serendipitous uh, in, in grouping people together. And we were able to make some of the first measurements on sea ice biology uh, in the uh, late 1970s with my colleague, uh, Osotara uh, Taguchi. Uh, so that started off a, a period of time <clears throat> when we could uh, team up with the, uh, with the sea ice biologists uh, and it culminated in uh, a SCAR working group on sea ice ecology, uh, which I was uh, uh, honored to chair uh, and resulted in the uh, establishment of the Gordon Research Conferences on uh, polar marine science. Um, other uh, aspects of international work were uh, with the International Commission on Snow and Ice uh, and the uh, AGU Committee on uh, uh, Snow, Ice, and Permafrost, where we were able to institute uh, a regular series of uh, sessions on, uh, on Antarctic sea ice, uh, and Arctic and Antarctic sea ice. Um, so the early work was not really associated with, with uh, SCAR, uh, particularly because at that time, uh, uh, SCAR was uh, concentrating on the, uh, on the uh, continent, uh, continental work, except for the biology, of course, there's uh, much work in uh, marine mammals and birds and, and aspects of the, of the uh, biological system. But because of the logistic capability, they were not able to uh, uh, get down there in the winter period when the sea ice cover was there and only in the, in the summer when the uh, sea ice cover had retreated. Um, so there hadn't been any work on, on uh, sea ice in particular until we uh, started that. A revolution occurred in the 1980s when uh, ice breaking ships started to, be, uh, to uh, come in uh, to the fore uh, with the uh, development of the uh, Polar Stern uh, in 1983 and uh, a Russian uh, expedition in the uh, called the Waddell Polynesian Expedition, which were made in 1981, where we uh, were able to penetrate the Antarctic pack ice uh, for the first time in, in uh, late winter and uh, winter seasons, respectively. Um, this was followed by uh, developments in the US of uh, 
the uh, N.B. Palmer and uh, Ships of Other Nations, uh, uh, Aurora Australis, and uh, in Australia and the British uh, Icebreakers uh, Endurance and uh, uh, J.C. Ross, which have uh, been instrumental in in uh, penetrating the Antarctic pack ice and, and making the uh, those aware. Scar first became involved uh, in uh, in our in our uh, work uh, in the nineteen uh, in nineteen ninety seven with the establishment of the uh, Glochamp program, uh, Global Change in Antarctica, under the leadership of the great uh, Charlie Bentley, and Ian Allison and I uh, joined forces again and were able to establish Aspect at that time as a, a special program just since uh, evolved into the uh, group of experts on, on Aspect. And uh, this has led to a, a great amount of international collaboration with, uh, with many researchers uh, uh, from uh, uh, Belgium and, and uh, Australia, uh, New Zealand, and I'm very grateful for all those uh, uh, collegial, collegial uh, aspects of this, which have led to a, a large coordination of uh, Antarctic sea ice research. And as, as several of us have mentioned, the uh, role of the Antarctic sea ice in global climate cannot be underestimated. Uh, it is the largest uh, uh, sea ice cover on earth uh, and the largest albedo change, seasonal albedo change, and has uh, ramifications for the production of uh, Antarctic bottom water. And of course, as a habitat for uh, uh, many of the 99%, uh, I guess, of the biomass uh, associated with Antarctica. So it's a very important problem to study, and it's uh, been my great uh, honor uh, and privilege to be involved with so many people. I'd like to thank all the uh, groups that I've been involved with uh, and uh, finish with a, uh, a tribute to the uh, uh, diversity efforts uh, uh, that have resulted in uh, women uh, being involved in the uh, science in Antarctica as we've shown by our many uh, 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 here, many uh, medal awardees here. As well, uh, I'd like to pay tribute to the, uh, to the many women colleagues that I've been associated with. Uh, they're uh, they're uh, a great source of that and they're really pioneers in, in, uh, in Antarctic research. Uh, people like Pat Langhorn in New Zealand and my colleagues uh, that participated with me on uh, ice station Waddell, Vicki Lytle, uh, Amy Field, and, and uh, Suzanne O'Hara. Um, and, uh, you know, I date back to the time when uh, basically Antarctic science was an all male uh, uh, enterprise. And uh, I'm very happy to be involved in the uh, diversification of, of, of that. And that extends down to my present uh, position at the University of Texas in uh, San Antonio, uh, which is a minority serving institution. And we've been able to establish a NASA center, uh, the Center for Advanced Measurements in Extreme Environments, where we have a polar component. And uh, we're now educating uh, uh, new uh, scientists and uh, in uh, STEM research, which is the, the major mission of, of uh, this effort. So it uh, continues on. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank uh, SCAR and, and all my colleagues uh, for their nomination and for this uh, uh, great award, which I'm uh, deeply honored to, to receive. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor Ackley, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Professor Ackley, and congratulations. All right, now uh, I'd like to invite uh, Professor Danette Karens, SCA Vice President for Science, to present the SCA Medal for Excellence in Antarctic Research. Of note, there are so many outstanding researchers to be selected, and this year, we have a joint recipient for this medal. The net floor is yours. Um, thank you. And hello, everyone. Um, uh, first, I'd like to congratulate all of the awardees today. 
And I would like to say also that I'm very honored to be making the presentations for the 2022 SCAR Medal for Excellence in Antarctic Research. And as Yedang just mentioned, um, this year we have two recipients, uh, Pippa, Pippa Whitehouse from the University of Durham and Elizabeth Sykes from Rutgers University. Um, just very briefly, uh, I'd like to mention that the selection criteria for this award um, include the breadth of research, the importance of the work, uh, recognition of research impact, publications, and contributions to advancing uh, SCAR activities. Um, I'd like to read the citation for, um, for Pippa Whitehouse, and then we'll have a few words from her, and then we'll do the same for, um, for Liz. So Professor Pippa Whitehouse is a leading expert on glacial isostatic adjustment, GIA, which is the response of solid earth to changes in ice and ocean loading as ice sheets change with time. She implements numerical models of GIA and is equally expert on records of past ice sheet configurations and sea level change. In landmark papers, she completed a continent-wide reconstruction of the Antarctic ice sheet and created a new GIA model for Antarctica. Professor Whitehouse has transformed the understanding of GIA by establishing the influence of solid earth deformation on the behavior of the ice sheet, which has important implications for understanding future sea level rise. She is greatly valued and extremely she is a greatly valued and extremely generous collaborator, and her expertise is highly sought by many, as indicated by the large number of her co-authored papers on wide-ranging topics. Through her highly cited publications, she has brought new GIA understanding to the global science community. Within SCAR, Professor Whitehouse took on the leadership of the recent Solid Earth Response and Influence on Cryosphere Evolution scientific research program, implementing high profile science activities and highly successful training schools. She was also a lead proponent for the current scientific research program, Instabilities and Thresholds in Antarctica, INSTANT. And she has fostered collaborative meetings with other science organizations. In addition, the Searcy training schools have significantly advanced the capacity building goals of SCAR. So I would like to express, express all of our sincere congratulations to Pippa and invite her to take the floor. Thank you very much, Deneb. Um, this is probably the most surprising thing that's happened in my entire career. Um, <laughs> so I am incredibly um, grateful and um, initially didn't really know how to react. Um, I've got a few notes. Um, the first thing to say is that I have a lot of fun in, in doing what I do. Um, it's a fantastic field to be working in um, and I work with many, many fantastic people. Um, so it's an absolute delight to be to be receive an award for doing something that I enjoy so much. Um, this is a nice opportunity to stop and reflect um, on those achievements which you just highlighted, Deneb. Um, we spend a lot of time worrying about things that we haven't done, things we failed at, things that we still want to do. Um, and so it's very helpful actually um, to have someone put this in perspective for me. Um, and I encourage others to, to stop and think about what you've achieved um, as well as um, what you still want to achieve in the future. Um, I have a few thank yous. Um, I started writing them down, it got to over 30. I screwed up that paper and started again. Um, so a couple of people to say thank you to. Um, and, and yeah, and apologies um, if I don't mention you, you are probably on that first list. Um, the first person is Glenn Milne. Um, I, my first postdoc here at Durham University was with Glenn um, and he taught me everything I know um, about the field of glacial isostatic adjustment um, and continues to, to be a, just an amazing mentor um, uh, to provide guidance in that area. So a big thank you to Glenn um, for, for starting me on this journey. Um, the second person um, to thank um, also um, at Durham University um, is Mike Bentley. Um, so while Glenn um, uh, moved over to Ottawa, he taught me everything I know about GIA. Um, Mike taught me everything I know about Antarctica. Um, and 
and I was uh, a post up with him um, well over a decade ago now. And, and I will never forget um, our first meeting. I walked into the room and he presented me with a notebook, um, which he'd been compiling um, with notes of, of all the field data, which was going to be useful to me as a modeler. So I was seeking to model the ice sheet and match the data, but the data were new to me. Um, and he'd taken an amazing amount of care and time um, to put the information together for me, provide me with all the, the references to go away and read. Um, and that's something I try and pass on, um, that amazing mentorship of me as, as an earlier career researcher. Um, the, the third person to thank um, uh, is actually Anne LeBrock. Um, so she taught me everything I know about ice sheet modeling. Um, when I started here at Durham, um, uh, we've got a lot of Antarctic people in Durham. Um, I sat down next to her. I was a GIA modeler and she was an ice sheet modeler. Um, and she very patiently um, sort of set me along the field of, of, of starting some ice sheet modeling. I mean, in particular, she, she explained about a marine grounding line. So I dealt with ice sheets that were not Antarctic ice sheets before I worked in this field. And they, they finish on the, on the land, they have a terrestrial margin, but a marine ice sheet is, is quite a, a tricky beast to be modeling. And as she talked to me about the grounding line and the role of the water depth on ice flow, I realized that we'd been missing something pretty obvious because I was modeling sea level change. And I knew that the, some of the boundary conditions people have been using were actually not quite right. Um, and we needed to have a really big rethink about this. There was a real sort of wow moment as I spoke with Anne. Um, and I'm really grateful for her for me, setting me on this journey of, um, really thinking about the solid earth and how that feeds into ice sheet dynamics. Um, two other um, groups of people to thank. Um, Wouter van der Waal um, uh, taught me everything I know about 3D GIA modelling. Um, and that's thinking about how the, the solid earth is actually not a, a uniform beast. Um, the, the internal structure of the earth is, is very variable. Um, and, and through him, I've been able to um, pick up the ability to run models that incorporate that. Um, so I'm grateful for his patience and guidance. Um, and the last people to thank um, are Terry Wilson and Matt King, uh, who are my co-conspirators in running the, the Cersei Research Program, um, which has been funded by SCAR between 2012 and, and 2020 and, and extending through the pandemic while we, we sort of dealt with the challenges there. Um, Terry and Matt have been amazing mentors and sponsors for me. Um, and what I mean by that um, as mentors, they've been there external to my university, external to my, my, my national sort of funding body and set up um, and people that I can just speak to and, and check in with how the research is going, how my career is going. Um, and they've provided amazing guidance. But as sponsors, um, it's really thanks to them that, that I am here. Um, I was an earlier career researcher. I did not like the term networking. I did not want to, to stand up and put myself out there and, and sort, of, um, sort of say who I was or what I did. And I've been in many meetings where there've been many senior scientists and they would direct questions to people like Terry or Matt. And, um, and they would turn around and say, well, I think you need to ask Pippa that. And it's through them, it's through their elevation of, of the work that I was doing that I became noticed um, in a way which I was very comfortable with. Um, and, I, and I try and do that to other um, scientists today. Um, I definitely can answer all the questions um, and I, I make it my job to know who can um, and to, to, to be a sponsor for them and, and raise those people up. Um, so I'm very, very grateful to Terry Wilson and, and Matt King. Um, they've given me this platform. I'm going to make two comments about science research um, since I have a couple of minutes. Um, the first um, is to say that the solid earth is very important for the Antarctic ice sheet. Um, uh, I, we've got there. Um, I think actually my proudest achievement um, is that this is now central to conversations around Antarctica. Um, the ice sheet interactions with the ocean and the atmosphere uh, have long been discussed and, and the solid earth is right in there now. Um, but this hasn't all happened through um, papers that I've written. Um, I, I juggle lots of roles. I, I'm passionate about the undergrad teaching we have here in Durham. Um, I have some admin roles, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and I head up a big fieldwork program. Um, we don't have a, a group system um, with me. I, I 
I don't have lots of PhD students or postdocs. Um, the people I work with are amazing and inspirational, um, but we can't get everything done. So I've actually made it my goal to, to get the message out there about what science needs to be done um, and the questions that need to be tackled. Um, so I, I, I try and speak to as many researchers as I, as I can from around the world and I get them to run with the ideas. Um, sometimes this leads to co-authorship. Um, I, I am co-author of many papers and I'm grateful for that. And sometimes it doesn't. And, and for me, I, I'm privileged in a permanent post, that is fine. Um, it was my job to, to get the science moving forwards. Um, so I didn't single-handedly transform the field, but um, I'm very proud to steer it in the right direction. Um, so that was message one, um, the solid earth um, is important and I'm, I'm happy to steer that forwards. Um, message two is, is thinking about how we value people who do research and the contributions to research. Um, our currency is still in, in publications um, and, and grants that we get funded, and, and this is highly problematic. Um, people do not have equal capacity to, to be producing papers or, or, or securing funding, and we need to move away from this, and there is progress on this. Um, but in the meantime, um, we, we do write papers and a couple of, of pleads. Um, uh, firstly, that relevant people are uh, and relevant data sets are credited when we when we publish our papers. Um, and that's thinking about everyone who's contributed um, and also the data that may have been collected um, by other groups, um, maybe in many years previous. Um, I can tell you personally, um, just to get a couple of data points out of a GPS instrument is a massive amount of work. Um, so if you're using those sort of data sets, do take the time to, to think about where they came from and credit the original um, sources. Um, the second is to, to value those people who make the research happen. Um, people like uh, the field staff, um, the people out in the research um, bases who, who feed me when I'm down there or, or fly planes around, uh, lab technicians back, back at our universities. Um, we're very grateful to them. Um, and I think it's also important to think about what their, what their currency is. Um, so what I mean by that is they may not need to be included on a paper um, and take the time to think about how to value their contribution and, and what it, you know, what they what they would be grateful for um, to, to look like recognition. Um, and then the last thing um, about research is to be proactive in involving the best people. Um, we all have a tendency to, to reach out to people who, who we know, people who look similar to us. Um, and I challenge you all to, to think outside the box as you're, as you're planning your research um, and, and think of people outside your immediate circle um, who may have um, some very crucial knowledge and skills um, um, that you, you don't have within the people you already know. But also to be sensitive here um, to cultural differences um, and hierarchical differences. Um, so what do I mean by that? I've been um, the only small female postdoc um, in many meetings with loads of senior male professors, um, and it was utterly terrifying. Um, the meetings all went well because um, I, those people were always very careful to value my opinion and make it clear I had a space in the room um, and that my input um, was, was very much valued, but it was frightening. Um, and as we seek to diversify our teams, it's important to be aware of that um, and to make it very clear um, why we're involving people and, and to value their input. Um, so finally, um, I'd just like to thank SCAR. Um, uh, you bring together people in a way which simply doesn't happen in other areas of research. And that's partly due to the, the collaborative nature of, of just trying to get the research done. Um, there's a very strong ethos of respect um, from the SCAR leadership all the way down. And this influences the entire community um, and across Antarctic and polar communities. Um, and I think it's no surprise that some of the, the challenging conversations we're having around changing research culture are being led by people in polar science. And, and that comes from the clear leadership. Thank you. Um, and also thank you finally for the opportunity um, over the years to exchange ideas with so many amazing researchers, um, especially um, the students, the, the postgrads, the earlier career researchers. Um, they have the fresh ideas and enthusiasm. Um, and it's really thanks to them um, that we've made so much exciting progress in my field over the past decade. So this one's for all of you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much um, for that um, inspiring um, talk. And also uh, congratulations again on, on the award. So I would like to now um, read the citation for Elizabeth Sykes, who is also a recipient for the SCAR Medal for Excellence in Antarctic Research. Um, Professor Elizabeth Sykes's considerable influence on Antarctic and Southern Ocean science derives from a series of groundbreaking publications that have improved our knowledge of the Southern Ocean's control on global climate in the late Quaternary. Her work has been innovative on multiple fronts, most notably for sea surface temperature estimations, identifying glacial deep ocean carbon dioxide sequestration in the Southern Ocean, and clarifying the relationship between changes in Southern Ocean circulation and atmospheric CO2 levels during ice ages. Her work has provided critical information about Southern Ocean frontal movements, Southern westerly wind shifts, and Southern Ocean sea surface temperatures in the last glaciation, all of which have improved our understanding of the Southern Ocean's influence on climate change. Professor Sykes's contributions to Southern Ocean and Antarctic science include her involvement in the science communities of three countries, Australia, New Zealand, and the United States. An active expeditioner, she has participated in 16 oceanographic voyages, seven of those in the Southern Ocean. She has mounted three successful major coring expeditions to the Southern Ocean and has led two as chief scientist. Professor Sykes actively serves the Antarctic Southern Ocean scientific community. Since 2017, she has been a member of the SCAR Southern Ocean Regional Panel, SORP, which is co-sponsored by Click and Clivar. And since 2019, she has served as the SORP co-chair. Professor Sykes is also a member of the Southern Ocean Task Force coordinated by SCAR. The task force is working to integrate the Southern Ocean into the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development. We would like to express our sincere congratulations to Liz, and I invite her to now take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Deneb. And I'd like to start off by thanking the SCAR Selection Committee and the SCAR Executive Committee for honoring me with this award, and to Natalie Goodkin, who is my nominator. <clears throat> My research for most of the last of the three decades has aimed to improve our understanding of the climate in the Southern Ocean surrounding Antarctica in the last glaciation. How cold was it? Did the fronts move? How far? But more than quantify what were the conditions in the last ice age, I wanted to understand the Southern Ocean's influence on climate and climate change. The Southern Ocean plays a fundamental role in the global carbon cycle and so global climate on many time scales. This is because the Southern Ocean is one of the most important locations where the deep ocean exchanges carbon dioxide sequestered through photosynthesis and the biological pump with the atmosphere. I like to say when I'm talking to people about what I do and why I do it is this is the Southern Ocean is where the ocean exhales. How well it exhales is largely determined by where the winds and fronts are, what the temperature of the water is, other dynamics like currents and um, um, upwelling. And this is why it is so important to understand these dynamics. And so I would like to share a few pictures. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, so, um, so to illustrate what I'm saying is, is I'm pleased to have made many useful contributions to our understanding but, of things. I'm sorry, Liz. Oh, we're, we're you've seeing got the wrong the screen. Oh, view. goodness. Let me try sharing the other screen. That would be clever to do. Hang on. It went so well in practice, didn't it? It always does. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let me share the correct screen, which would be this one. Trying again. There we go. Um, so to launch into it again, um, I, I'm really pleased 
to be honored for this and for having been able to make useful contributions to understanding how these dynamics in the Southern Ocean have changed in the past. One of the critical things the paleo-oceanographic community has been able to determine in the last few decades is how these conditions in the Southern Ocean changed with the warming at the end of the last ice age. This is important because this warming, this deglacial warming at the end of the last ice age serves as a natural example for global climate warning. Warming. Anything we can learn about the last deglaciation has implications for the present and future warming in the Southern Ocean and Antarctica with anthropogenic atmospheric CO2 changes. I want to stop again here and say I appreciate this award for its broader scope because I feel that with this award, SCAR is helping to highlight the importance of the Southern Ocean in regulating levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide on millennial timescales. And so a fundamental part of any scientific work in the Antarctic is field work, getting out there and collecting samples. And as an oceanographer, my experience is much less these sort of snowy um, uh, vistas and, and um, icebergs and more heaving seas. Um, this is from a winter cruise on the Aurora Australis and heavy gear. Um, I spend most of my time, and this is from our work on the uh, Ravel, the US ship Ravel. I spend most of my time with these heavy gear and collecting samples, but also um, processing it aboard sea and getting these samples into a condition and um, so that we can work with them and bring them home. But I've also done a lot of work collecting water and processing and working with traps, sediment traps, both floating and moored. Whoops. And I have two reasons for showing you these pictures. One is to illustrate the many, many geochemical data streams that go into characterizing and understanding the biogeochemical cycles in the Southern Ocean, which is, of course, the carbon cycle. But also, it's to emphasize the people. It takes teamwork in the Southern Ocean and Antarctica to get these things done. And so I've worked with a number of people on a number of cruises to make to bring these samples home and to get this science completed. <clears throat> Moreover, as a woman doing Antarctic science, and especially as a mother, there are the people who support us from home. And I'd like to personally thank my husband, John Wilkin, who is also an oceanographer, for holding the fort down in all those many, many months that I was away and taking care of these children, who you can see are now grown. And we both think we've done a success with this uh, venture in our lives because I think they're, they've, they've turned out quite well. So it takes a team to work in the Southern Ocean and Antarctica. And I want to underscore that any recognition for excellence in Antarctic research is, in fact, praise to the spirit of teamwork and international collaboration. I want to thank my colleagues from around the world at all career stages and of all stripes and diversity who have lifted my boat and made this journey, this journey of adventure, a joy all these years. Thank you. OK, thank you. And congratulations to Pifa and uh, Elizabeth. Oh, it's very good. All right. So uh, also, I'd like to thanks to uh, uh, Ravi and uh, Jefferson and uh, Deneb for your nice introduction for the OODs. Thank you. OK, well, now I'd like to hear a final remark from our Indian colleagues who have made tireless effort in organizing uh, the SCA 2022 Open Science Conference. So I'd like to uh, introduce Dr. Uh, uh, Rahul Mohan. Rahul, you have a floor. Greetings from India. The SCAR Open Science Conference has been truly thought-provoking and inspiring, especially with all the session talks, the presentations, and the discussions. With your support, we hope to continue to create space for collaboration, research, and innovation among scientists across the globe for a better understanding of Antarctica and our planet Earth in general. As we come to the end of this SCAR Open Science Conference, I would like to say that the end is never the end. It's always the beginning of something great. 
With these meetings, we hope a new beginning has been made, a new synergy of working together for a common goal is developed. Pandemic restrictions had forced us into this virtual conference. The ability to watch a video of the event rather than attending it physically may not be able to replace all the excitement but can definitely broaden our horizon in many, many ways. On a brighter note, we appreciate the commitment from SCAR for ensuring that the activity is conducted in a manner such that it minimizes our carbon footprint. It has been a challenge to bring this conference, global conference, virtually and on a global scale with different time zones and different language and area barriers. But all this was possible to network together with a dedicated, hardworking team and commitment from a, a plethora of people who organize this event. I'm sure there would have been some hardships as well during the virtual conference. We apologize if there were any. It is my duty and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the local organizing committee for SCA Open Science Conference 2022. At the outset, I would like to express our gratitude to the entire SCAR community for attending and actively participating in this virtual conference. Our special thanks to the SCAR president, Dr. Y.D. Kim, the ex-president, Professor Chuck Connecticut, who was a big help, uh, the, the ISOC president, Dr. Stephen, and the SCAR secretariat for giving us the opportunity and support in planning and execution for hosting the SCAR 2022 conference. I would be failing in my duty if I don't thank the Honorable Minister of Earth Sciences, Dr. Jitain Singh, who not only graced and came to the inauguration of the SCAR Open Science Conference, but also highlighted India's commitment towards polar research. Thanks to the Ministry of Earth Sciences for the same. We also thank, in the same breath, the Indian National Science Academy for welcoming SCAR to India and the National Committee on, of SCAR in India. I extend a hearty vote of thanks to our Secretary, Ministry of Earth Sciences, who happens to be the SCAR Vice President, Dr. M. Ravi Chandran. The past MOES secretaries and the program officers of MOES for their constant support Right from the time the SCAR Open Science was conceptualized to be bid and till the very last date of this closing ceremony. I would be failing in my duty if I don't extend my gratitude to our director of NCPOR, Mirza Javed Beg, who has been a pillar of constant support for this event. I must mention a deep sense of appreciation to all the members of the International Science Organizing Committee who were there at all the time, the National Advisory Committee of SCAR and the OSC and the special, especially the local organizing committee. Professor N.C. Pant, Dr. Thamban Melod, Dr. Avinash Kumar, Dr. Rohit Srivastav and Mr. Anupke for putting together this entire conference words, I would be failing in my words if I don't thank them properly. An event like this surely doesn't happen within weeks. It starts way back, uh, not only months, but years before. It requires a keen eye for detailed planning and execution, in spite of the pandemic, which held us back for many, 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 many months together. We were fortunate to be backed by an extremely dedicated team who worked alongside me tirelessly to execute this Open Science Conference. I would be, I would be failing if I don't thank the team from the PCO team, that's the Elborn meetings, Sri Rajiv Pandey Ji, Shweta, Praveen, Mintu, and many, many others who worked together 
and putting this platform all together in a new format as the SCAR secretary had wanted it and uh, hold it virtually. Uh, there are people who work behind the scene who will never be seen in front. And I take this opportunity to thank them as well. They include my own outreach team, which is, of course, Dr. Swati Nagar, who helps me with small little nitty gritties every now and then. There has been a person who, whose films you must have seen in the inaugural. A creative person, Rakesh Rao, was very much a part of our team. Then there are my own people who sit in, with, with in my room. Ankita and Shweta and all the colleagues of NCPR whom I'll not be able to name today, but I would say the family and friends and the huge family of NCPR for their constant support and encouragement. In the end, I would like to say that in India, we are a strong believer in a Sanskrit face. And I would like to say that Atiti Devo Bhava, which translates to our guest are equivalent to the Almighty, the God. Concerning this, I humbly invite you all to our land of rich culture, tradition, and innovation to experience our warm hospitality. With this, I would like to thank everyone whom I have not named here. And uh, apologies if there were any inner errors or any, uh, any problems in the virtual setup. Uh, this was new for us. And I'm sure things will always improve from here. So stay safe, take care, and a warm namaste from India. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much, Raul, for your uh, pre-recorded uh, the remarks. All right. So uh, I would also like to invite the uh, uh, SCA Executive Director, Dr. Chandri Kanath on behalf of the Secretariat to exp express a further thanks to the people who made contribution to the success of this uh, Open Science Conference 20 and 22. Chandrika? Thank you. I'd like to say a final few brief words of thanks. First of all, to Dr. Rahul Mohan and the local organizing committee and all our Indian hosts this meeting has truly been a joint effort. It's been a real pleasure working with you. And SCAR would also like to thank the International Science Organizing Committee. And they are ISOC Chair, Professor Stephen Chown, SCAR Vice President, Professor Deneb Kurenz, Dr. Catherine Ritz, Dr. Yilda Kakavo, Dr. Florence Colioni, Dr. Johanna Grabo, Dr. Naresh Pant, Dr. Tumban Meloth, Dr. Rahul Mohan, Steve Colwell, Dr. Susie Grant, Professor Ian McDonald, Dr. Peter Roberts, Dr. Gabriella Roldan, Dr. Mercedes Santos, and Dr. Ilana Weiner. The ISOC was supported by many conveners for whose hard work we are really grateful. Thanks to them all for putting together a fantastic science program. As you've heard, we had almost a thousand abstracts submitted and over 2,000 people registered for the platform. So thank you to all our fantastic speakers, panelists, and conveners, and to all the participants for taking the time to enjoy the sessions and participate in the discussions. Finally, thank you to the staff at the SCAR Secretariat for all their hard work and their dedication and their, their keen eyes for detail. And so thank you specifically to Dr. Johanna Grabo Dr. Owen Griffin and Rosebury Nash, and they were assisted by Rachel Downey, Dr. Inga Beck, and Dr. Andrea Herbert in that work. So thank you to them all. I hope you'll all continue to enjoy the parallel sessions that are taking place next week, as well as looking at what's happened on the conference website and YouTube. And with that, I'll say thank you and hand back to Yedon. Thank you, Chandrika, for such a nice <laughs> word of uh, appreciation. You know. Okay, then uh, before we close for the uh, SCAR Open Science Conference 2024, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Marcelo Lepe, Director of the Institute for Antarctic Research of Chile, to present the next venue. Marcelo, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. And uh, I'm glad to introduce the 2024 Open Science Conference and Biennial Meetings in Chile. Um, I want to share with you my screen, if it's possible. Please let me know if you are watching it. It's okay. Oh, perfect. So uh, we will start with uh, um, a short overview about our country. I know that is uh, far away, but it's so close to Antarctica. This is something uh, extremely important. It's part of our idiosyncrasy. And uh, let me tell you some things about Chile. So our language is Spanish. Our currency is uh, the Chilean peso. Um, that is flux, fluctuating a lot, uh, the relationship with the dollar today, but uh, probably we will be uh, assessing you about the new information. Our population is around 19 million uh, inhabitants. Uh, we have six UNESCO World Heritage Sites, 10 uh, World Biosphere Reserves by UNESCO, um, Torres del Paine National Park was cho chosen as a, a wonder of the world uh, has a leader position today in the protection of the oceans uh, with uh, several marine protected areas one of the countries with more uh, surface of the ocean protected uh, more than 2900 volcanoes uh, you will find some information about it later 76 percent of south american glaciers um, has the oldest and the ancient tree in the world with 5,400 years recently published uh, and the driest desert in the world. I also will mention it later. And 16 astronomical observatories, both scientific and touristic. But Chile is uh, also considered a land of records. And one of the first is Chile is the longest north-south trending country in the world, exceeding across 39 degrees of latitude, passing from environments considered tropical, uh, driest deserts in the north, to uh, uh, subpolar and uh, sub-Antarctic environments in the south. But also it's one of the narrowest places, uh, countries in the world with only 350 kilometers in the widest point. In almost uh, 100 kilometers, square kilometers uh, that make Juan Fernandez Island, uh, one of the islands more isolated in the world, there are more than 209 species of plants, uh, of which 126 are endemic. This island was awarded by Guinness record uh, in 2002 for having the greatest and unique diversity of plants in a reduced area. Also, the driest place in the world, Kiyawa, in the Atacama Desert, in between uh, 1961 and 2001, the average annual rainfall at the station near Kiyawa was only 0.5 millimeters of precipitation. Uh, in comparison, the average annual rainfall in the Amazon basin is about 4,260 times higher is the driest place in the world. Also, the, it's a sad record, the biggest six earthquakes ever recorded in, 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 in our uh, world's history, in Maule, Chile, earthquake in 2010, recently, 8.8 .8 in magnitude, Kamchatka in Russia uh, in the 1952, nine, Tohoku in Japan, uh, 9.1, Sumatra in Indonesia uh, in 2004, 9.1, Alaska uh, in the 64, 9.2, and finally the top one is Valdivia in 1960 with 9.5. But I love this record, this is my favorite. The Yagan people of southern Chile and Argentina hold the Guinness record 
world record for having the most concise word in the world. It is it's very difficult, including uh, my Spanish accent, uh, mami jalapinata pie, which means something like a look between two people where each one waits for the other to start an action that both want but neither one dares to initiate. It's a very specific meaning, but it's something uh, really important in, uh, we have to understand. Uh, we have a variety of cultures in Latin America, and Chile is not an exception. From the very north to the very south, many languages and many cultures. Chile today is a very well-connected country. Uh, passing through Santiago, our international airport, uh, you can uh, access it by 15 airlines flying to Chile regularly. Uh, some information about the places where the meeting will be organized. Uh, at the moment, two uh, cities, uh, Pucón uh, in the Araucanía province, uh, is uh, not so far away from Santiago. It's a, it's a short flight from Santiago to Temuco, the capital of the province. And then uh, another one, and 15, one hour, 15 minutes driving or by bus directly from Temuco to Pucón. Pucón is a very beautiful uh, uh, area. You will uh, find uh, images and videos about it after my short talk. Uh, the weather in between August and September is rainy, but it's not uh, impossible to make a lot of uh, uh, outdoor activities in the, in the, in the area, a uh, lot of forests, volcanoes. And uh, the other um, important part of this uh, Open Science Conference and biennial meetings will be Punta Arenas in, in Patagonia, in Chile and Patagonia. Uh, Punta Arenas uh, is a city uh, really cold in, in August, but not so cold as uh, uh, Norway or Sweden, probably, uh, in, in during winter. Um, at the moment, we have uh, some snow over the hills, uh, but uh, it's extremely important to understand that as one of the closest countries and regions in the Earth to Antarctica, we have we are under the influx of uh, the Antarctic weather too, but probably a good environment for an Antarctic meeting. Mm -hmm. So Chile is today one of the big uh, five gateways to Antarctica, but especially a gateway for science. 22 to 23 countries are passing through Punta Arenas in a regular year after the pandemic. Probably uh, we will recover these numbers. Um, that they are passing through uh, Punta Arenas in the way into Antarctica. The Chilean Antarctic Science Program uh, uh, has around 100 projects during the last years, uh, and the PROCIEN, the acronym of the Chilean Antarctic Science Program, comprise several public competitive funds. All of their projects are peer reviewed by international experts. In numbers, uh, we have uh, every year, the last year, 451 researchers in the field and connected with the program. Uh, from those uh, 322 are Chilean researchers that are showing that at least 120 or 29 uh, researchers uh, are uh, from abroad. And this is in uh, really interesting. We have a one quarter of our uh, program usually are considering uh, uh, researchers from other countries. Our average age of researchers is 45 years, around 33 institutions in the country are related with the national uh, science program. Uh, the last year were 90 projects uh, in the execution, and we have also a very success students in Antarctic school expedition uh, and, and fair every year at the moment is conducted in Punta Arenas. Um, but we are also proud about the participation of women in our science program. That is something that uh, uh, we have to highlight. So 
Save the date. Uh, SCAR Open Science Conference in Pucón uh, will be held in August, in between August 19 to 23. Uh, the 21st will be free uh, in 2024, of course. And the SCAR Delegates Meeting and SCAR Business Meetings will be in Punta Arenas uh, in August 26 to 29. So we are already waiting for you. We have a, a, a team working directly in, 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 in uh, organ trying to organize the best meeting. Uh, of course, it will be very difficult to, to, to super uh, uh, India's organization that was excellent. But we are trying to, uh, after six years, trying to promote uh, a, a presential meeting and, and trying to enjoy also some part of the Antarctic spirit of Chile and part of the natural history that is closely connected with the story of Antarctica. So thank you very much and I hope to see you next time in Chile and soon in India. All right, thank you. Yeah, Marcel, I, I, I sincerely look forward to uh, the SCA Office and Conference 2024 in Pucon, Chile. Thank you for your invitation. All right, with that, I would like to officially announce the end of SCA Open Science Conference 2022. But please do bear in mind that uh, there will be still be uh, several parallel sessions in the SCA workshop next week. It's a very important one from Monday to the Wednesday. Thank you to the audience for your participation, especially for those who uh, took the time to upload uh, their posters and also early career researchers for getting involved in the sessions. For SCA Delegate, I look forward to seeing you in the person and online for the SCAR delegate meeting in Goa, India in September. Thank you very much all, and please have a rest of good day, good afternoon, and good night, and goodbye. Bye.